Hey everybody, today we're gonna to be learning a new uh, procedure for dividing multi-digit numbers. We've been doing a lot of area model solving, 126 divided by three. We're used to making a nice area model, knowing our total amount is gonna be 126. That's our goal number. And we'll break it down, three groups of what gets me close to this number, three groups of 30 got me 90. And then I thought, well, I gotta figure out how much I have left, so I took my dividend took away the amount that was subtracted, found that I had 36 left. Three times what gets me close to 36? I already knew that it was 12, because that's a memory fact. And that was three times 12 is 36. So I added 90 and 36 together and saw that I got my goal number of 126. All good. My final answer is 30 partial quotient, partial quotient, put them together, get my full quotient of 40. Two, right? And the, re the procedure we're going to use now uh, has a lot of similarities. Ooh, I don't like that too. Okay, let's go ahead and see what it looks like. You're going to use a table that some, it looks like a big seven and some people call it the big seven, but there's a lot of great features to doing it this way. And it might look more like um, the way maybe a big brother or sister solves division problems or your parent solves division problems. So it will look, should look a little bit familiar and we'll get used to it. How I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and put my dividend right here, my total amount I'm working with, 126 divided by three, the divisor goes here. The divisor is like the driver of the problem because I'm gonna be using multiples of three to figure this out. How many groups of three can I make with that number? That's basically what we're saying, right? Let, and I'm going to have some kind of work zone for my multiples of three somewhere nearby. Three times what gets me close to 126. Now we could use the same numbers we used in the area model, or we could do something different. Um, playing around with my multiples of three, I noticed that three times four is 12. That's a memory fact, but 12, 10 times greater would be 120. And that looks great. So three times, not four, but 40 is gonna give me 120 and that knocks off a big bit. So I've made 40 groups of three and that got me 120. So in order to take this 120 away, I'm gonna subtract, but I'm gonna include a little shelf over here to put my partial quotient on. I made 40 groups of three and that's why I have to take that 120 away. How much do I have left? Six. Three times what gets me close to six and that's too easy. Obviously two more groups of three, so I'm gonna be able to take six away. How'd I take that six away? Well, I made two groups of three and that took the six away, I have nothing left. Partial quotient, partial quotient. We're gonna be looking for it up here, aren't we? So it's almost like you add them together and push them up and over, and there they are. Okay, so 126 divided by three, is 42. There's a place to keep track of our dividend right down here in the center. There's a place on the outside to keep track of our partial quotients and our divisor. Another cool thing is to think about this. You can see the relationship to the area model when I do that, right? If that was all you were looking at, essentially 126 is the total amount, three groups, how many in each group? 42. Three groups of 42, 126, or 126 divided into groups of three will give you 42 of them. So that's the procedure, but let's get some more practice and go ahead and get something so that you can do these along with me. Let's try 348 divided by um, four. That's how you might see it written. Sorry about that. But we're gonna put it into our table my dividend goes here, the total amount. The divisor goes here. And I would read this 348 divided by four. Let's go. Four times what gets me close to 300 or 40 or eight. Um, and you will probably have, we can all have something different at this point. Well, maybe some people chose big numbers, small. So the, the partial quotients might not be the exact same ones as I choose but our final quotient will be. So sometimes I just start playing around with three times, I mean, sometime amount times four. And I know that like, I'm looking at this 34 and I know that 
third four times eight is 32 but that's not a like that would that wouldn't help me because this is 340 but if four times eight is 32 then i know that four times 80 is going to be 320 and that's going to take a big bunch of my dividend and take care of it so i'm going to be able to subtract 320 because i've made 80 groups of four I'm going to be able to take away 320 from my dividend because it's already put into groups. I'm not really taking it away. I'm, it's already been taken care of. It's put into its groups. So now I have my shelf over here to tell you how many groups of four I made to get there. And it was 80 because that's going to be important in our final answer, right? How much do I have left? 68. Oh, sorry, 28. <laughs> Okay, and I start the process again. Is there anything over here that will help me? Four times something getting me close to 28? Well, I know that four times seven is 28, so that's right on the money. So I'm gonna be able to take 28 away. Why? Because I made seven groups of four. That's what got me using up or div dividing out the 28. I have nothing left and I'm finished adding up my partial quotient and my partial quotient and getting it up there on the top. And I am finished. 348 divided by four is gonna be 87. Let's try one that gets us into the thousands because we really use the same basic procedure and I use my multiples of 10. When the numbers get big, I just start using my multiples of 10 instead of three times four, it's three times 40, or three times 400, or three times 4,000. Just use your multiples of 10 and you will get really big numbers pretty fast. 3,794 is my total dividend. And I'm gonna be dividing that into seven groups. And I'm gonna just go ahead and start playing around with my multiples of seven. Seven times what gets me close to 37? I know that's not a 37, it's 3,700, but I can make my value 10 times or 100 times greater once I get a nice little head start. So three times four is 28. That's pretty close. I mean, sorry, seven times five is 35. That's even closer. So how would I make it so it's not plain all 35? It's 3,500. Well, I'd have to multiply seven groups of not five, not 50, but 500. And that would get me 3,500. That's how you use your multiples of 10. So we can get rid of 3,500. And again, not getting rid of, dividing it up. And how did I do that? I made how many groups of seven? was used when I used that amount and it was 500. Thankfully, my little chart's here. So if I forgot, it's right there. I made 500 groups of seven. How much do I have left? 294. Is anything here gonna help me um, maybe with that? And I'm seeing this 28, which I know I can make 10 times greater into 280. So I think I'm gonna work with that. Seven times four is 28, so seven times 40 is going to be 280 and that's because I made 40 groups of seven and I have 14 left over oh two times seven it gets super fun when you get down to numbers that are just like super obvious like that so I'm finished um the final answer would be 542 adding those partial quotients up and putting them in a location where people are going to be looking for that final quotient. Nice job. We'll go ahead and start practicing these. Um, and I hope you like it. I hope you find that a little bit easier and um, a way to keep things organized.